Let me say how pleased I am to join you this afternoon for this very first African Women Leaders Network Intergenerational Retreat on Leadership in Africa. This retreat is immensely important and lies at the heart of the transformation of our continent. When countries in Africa put women and girls at the center of their development programs, their societies and economies thrive, and the benefits are also extended to future generations. I therefore thank the entire African Women Leadership Network for spearheading this path-breaking program, a program that holds promise to amplify the gains on women empowerment, but more importantly, to articulate on what more needs to be done to enlarge the space for women to more effectively contribute to sustainable development and peace in our continent. Indeed, this retreat is also being held under the initiative of the 1 million by 2021 initiative, Africa Unite for the Youth, Bridging the Gap, and reaching out to our African youth. This initiative is very much in line with the aspirations, especially aspiration six of the African Union's Agenda 2063 and goal five of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2030, which focus on achieving gender equality and empowering women and girls. I believe that this retreat is also being held against the backdrop of major gender equality initiatives that are coming up in the near future. For example, Kenya will host the Nairobi Summit of the International Conference on Population and Development from the 12th to the 15th of November this year. This summit that is themed accelerating the promise of International Conference on Population and Development will galvanize, change, and mobilize leadership in addressing outstanding and newly emerging challenges related to population and development with a focus especially on adolescence as well as the sexual reproductive health agenda. Similarly, in September of 2020, the entire global community will mark the 25th anniversary of the Fourth World Conference on Women and the adoption of the 1995 Beijing Declaration and Platform for action. Indeed, as we all prepare for both these conferences, I want to challenge all of you here today to ensure that a strong African woman voice and an intergenerational partnership which promotes the empowerment of young African girls in line with this retreat's objective is heard in those international conferences. There is no doubt in my mind that across the continent, we have made major progress in the empowerment of women, as that Madame Banda has clearly stated. Many more girls are going to school. Major strides have been made in improving women's health. And more women are active participants in politics and the labor market. From across the continent, African women continue to make outstanding contributions at both national and global levels. We know many who are there. Currently, we have Saleh Zwede, who should have also been here, but unfortunately couldn't make it, the president of Ethiopia. Chimada Ngozi Adiche, a great Nigerian novelist. We have nice Kalimete Dinger, a young Kenyan campaigner against FGM, and this is just to name but a few of them. But as much as we have made strides, I think we must all acknowledge that a lot more needs to be done to fully harness the tremendous social and economic potential of our women and girls. Women still face many barriers in contributing to and benefiting from development ranging from limited access to basic services 
legal and regulatory barriers, and constraints in accessing economic and job opportunities. Women are also, and con also continue, to be targets of domestic violence, discrimination, and stigmatization in many of our societies. Further, women continue to be underrepresented in leadership positions in almost all the sectors of our society. African women constitute 50% approximately of the total African population, if not more. However, only 5% of the CEOs are women. Only 20% of board members are women. Moreover, even when women get to the top, many of them occupy staff positions rather than executive roles. We must collectively, therefore, work towards reaping the demographic dividend from the huge pool of well-educated women and young men as well. To achieve this, we need to fully utilize the creative energy, talent, and skills of these people. Indeed, at the Women Deliver Conference in May of this year, I was very impressed by an 18-year-old girl from Zambia, <coughs> Natasha Mwanasa, who gave a compelling speech about the hopes and expectations of young people. Natasha represents the new generation which holds our future. I was very wise that day. You talked about wisdom. I chose not to challenge her. So I chose to agree with her. <laughs> My friend, the Prime Minister of Canada, chose to challenge her. He regretted it after that. <laughs> he regretted it. As I said, she represents the new generation which holds our future. This is a generation that is bold and articulate and which has clarity of vision about what they need from their leaders. We need to listen to them, we need to work with them, we need to support them. And I believe that this retreat is an important step towards building that relationship. We should be bold in championing the empowerment of our youth, and in particular young women, as a necessary step towards building a secure future for our continent. Let us redouble our efforts to break gender stereotypes and attitudes that propagate discrimination against women and girls. Let us, as policymakers, cultivate governance systems that strengthen and consolidate efforts to empower young people through meaningful youthful partic youth participation and equal partnership in driving our respective national agendas in line with the African Youth Charter adopted in 2006. And to this end, together with my young sister over there, we plan to hold a youth conference in December of this year here in Nairobi, where I will engage with them and I am encouraging them to develop their own agenda, which I shall take forward to the summit of the AU the following year and present the position of the African youth to the leaders of the African continent. <clears throat> Equally and very important, I also urge all of you here to develop structured mechanisms and opportunities that will provide our young men and women with the appropriate training, resources, and opportunities necessary to actively participate in designing programs and policies that affect their lives. I'm encouraged that this forum, forum has very seasoned women leaders whom our young leaders can look up to as role models for mentorship. The experience of those of you who have been in political leadership is invaluable. And in this room alone, I count my sister Joyce and my other sister from Mauritius, our sister 
from Central African Republic, all who have been presidents. We also have Hannah here, former foreign minister of Ghana. You know, you, you have a pool of people who understands the ups and downs of politics and how to help you move around and how to get by stubborn men if you need to be to get to the top. And many others in many other sectors who are here who will be an invaluable, invaluable uh, um, contribution to all of you, to help you, to guide you, to mentor you, to share their experiences, and for you to pick up where they have left off and to even reach greater heights than they have that should really always be the spirit of mentorship. You want to reach even greater heights than they did. Use their experience, use their knowledge, which they are imparting to you freely and happily because they want to see in their lifetimes you achieving your objectives and goals. So as I said, the experience of those of you who have been in political leadership will be invaluable to these people. And I encourage you to apply it to also influence the political processes in our continent and to be more amenable to the partnership of women in politics. And I mean, I will take your message to Khartoum tomorrow that uh, one of the messages from this conference is that you expect more leaders, women leaders in, in Khartoum. They played their role in the changes. They should get their fair share too. Gender equality will continue to remain central in my administration's agenda as enshrined by our constitution. And as a government, we will continue to put in place robust policy and legal framework to promote, enforce, and monitor equality and non-discrimination. Indeed, I want to give you my personal assurance that I remain passionate and committed to ensure that women assume leadership positions, not only in Kenya, but in Africa as well. My personal commitment will continue even in retirement. This will be something I will continue to do. <clears throat> I have deliberately, over our period, undertaken initiatives aimed at promoting gender equality and empowerment of women and girls as set out in our national development plans. And all our medium-term plans outline flagship projects that are aimed at promoting gender-inclusive growth, prevention and response to gender-based violence, and more importantly, the empowerment and education of the girl child. I am committed, as I have said, to ensuring that we become the generation that ensures that no one is left behind, that girls do not continue to endure FGM and other harmful practices, and that we equip our young people with the skills to enable them to realize their potential. Kenya, I believe, is on the way to realizing the provisions of African Union agenda, particularly our Aspiration 6, which seeks to have an Africa where development is people-driven, unleashing the potential of its women and youth. Therefore, in conclusion, I want to assure you once again, the women leaders of our continent of my personal support and that of my administration in this important agenda. And I would also like to encourage, especially the young leaders, the young women leaders attending this retreat, to embrace this opportunity to learn, to grow, and ultimately to influence. Aspire to be change agents in your communities and workplaces, and to inspire more youth and more young women to work towards a more prosperous, stable, and peaceful continent.